Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Relocation Guide YouTube channel. My name is Adam Hancock, and today I wanna to introduce a economics discussion of sorts where I'm taking one particular and only one particular piece of Florida, and with its specific criteria and the things going for it right now in 2023, you can make a serious argument, I'm gonna make a serious argument, of this might be the only place that I view as viably housing crash proof. Um, I think this is a sneaky way to get your head around separating some of these large real estate items, especially if you're looking at multiple areas at one time when you're looking at possibly relocating and or investing. So I hope you enjoy uh, this different format today and let's get started. All right, so quick preface before I get into the meat of the discussion here. When talking about any of these large life-changing items, relocating your whole family, mixing with real estate of, you have you know, a housing crisis people are speaking about. You have lending and financing fragility, high interest rates. You just came off a COVID era where people have settled yet. And just gives you a bunch of reasons where you don't know if you're making the right decision. You don't feel good about any decision. You don't know who to trust in advising you on making a decision because people um, are always tied to some thing that would self-benefit or insecurity or you know ignorance or something like that. So it's hard to know who to listen to and all these kind of things. I like to take like three items to feel better about deciding on a thing. One of those being clear cut things that are happening in the region, development wise, commercially, et cetera, that, um, that give you a some semblance of what's gonna happen next. Then I like to add old school real estate macroeconomics. There's things that hold true about real estate rules in general over a long period of time that seem to, if you had to make it a quick decision, they, uh, there's a better than not chance those work out. I'm gonna explain this. And number three, I like to add qualitative intuition and common sense. And that three-headed monster lets me make a better decision, lets me feel better about advising someone, because at least I feel like that's all the information I had at the time. So with that being said, I wanna talk about four major items, and I wanna discuss why I think Tampa Bay, Florida, this region in Southwest Florida, I think if you had to pick one spot, you had to pick one, to stay, to survive, to live, to work, the whole shebang, why I think this is the best mousetrap in the state for giving you the ability to say, if I had to you know, put all my eggs in that basket, this is the one that could survive if the rest went under, which they're not going to, but if the rest went under. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here today. Without further ado, let's hop in. Okay, number one on the list, in my opinion, you have to start with geography. So fast forward here, and what we're saying is you're already in the state of Florida. That is not a decision we're deciding on here. You are already picking Florida. Now you have to pick where to go in Florida. And I think Southwest Florida by far is the best location if you had to pick one in the state. Remember, you can only pick one. So this is going to be your home base. And what it does for you, a couple of things, right? And we're, the whole argument again is crash proof. So this is the, if you're gonna move to Florida, we need all the things going on to make it the best option where it's less fragile. One of those is coastal proximity. You're moving to Florida, you don't need to be on the beach, but I think you need to be on the coast. You know, Orlando's inland. This is on the coast, but not just any coast, this is the Gulf Coast. And I think if you had to pick the Gulf Coast, there's some, obviously a lot of opinion in here. I think the Gulf Coast waters I like better, but not just any, I think this part of Florida's Gulf Coast, because it does span South of Marco Island, all the way to the Panhandle, is I, uh, I like the beaches better, I like the water better. Uh, it's by far um, more insulated because of like the nook of the gun historically to a lot of the hurricane stuff that will happen just because of the inherent nature of, there's a wife's tales, but the inherent nature to me of like how hard it is for a hurricane to stay strong and hit this part of Florida particularly versus the others, right? You're already in Florida, so hurricanes are a thing. Um, I like it better than that. And then I think one of the biggest things for me is um, two layers, right? One, I think to be the best mousetrap, like I mentioned, in the state, you need to be central. You need to not be on a fringe. You know, Jack, so take cities of this size. Jacksonville is very far north and east, almost in Georgia. You have Miami, which a lot of people like, very, very far south. It is the furthest south. So once you're there, you're there. So they're all on a fringe. They're all, once you're there, you're there, but you lose access to a lot of the rest of what the state has to offer. And where Tampa's based, I feel like if you had to pick one, the central proximity gives you the best of what Florida has to offer. So not only do you have Tampa and all that that has going for you, which we're gonna get deeper in the video here, but you are uh, an hour to you know all that Sarasota has to offer. You're a little closer to Bradenton. You are um, two, uh, less than two hours to Orlando. 
you are, and then you're just like three, three and a half to Miami, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, um, a little over that to Jacksonville, St. Augustine, Ponte Vedra, um, like six hours or less to Savannah, Georgia. And then the Panhandle is the only thing that's really the furthest fringe of the state. But all the actions really in, in, in the south and southwest part of the state for the most part. And if you had to pick one spot, I think this geography gives you the most central and most coastal home base of all of them. All right, number two, let's talk economics, industry, commercial, etc. And what I mean by this is one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing in the conversation of being crash proof and being the best option, 100% to me is you need a reason to need to be in a city, not just want to. So if you tracked with me, I'm going to kind of tell a story as we go in the video here. And, you, and you're, you're honed with me. You're all in on like, yeah, geography. I get it. Southwest Florida. I agree. I'm already there. But Tampa Bay is not the only player. You have Sarasota, Greater, Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch. You have Naples, Fort Myers. That's also Southwest Florida. Very similar locational benefits. The big difference there is that these are lifestyle first cities, work second. What that creates is usually higher real estate values but not dependent on those people making that money in that same area. So there's a wide divide there. Most of these people are independent. There's not a big industry. If you got, say you, you're one of the rare people that got relocated for work below Tampa Bay in Southwest Florida, Sarasota and Naples, it, that job goes away. There's not five different competitors to pick from, right? There's just not, a, it's not based on industry, which makes it lovely for lifestyle, but most of the people are inherently gonna be older because of life stage, they're going to be independent, and that's going to bring a lot less activity for kids, a uh, higher demographic age population, and it's fragile because the price point's high, and the industry in that town's not based on that. It's hospitality that's, hospitality that's lower paid that supports uh, um, a higher tier of um, average uh, uh, wealth, basically. So that's just more fragile in general. Uh, it's not not that every Joe lives in these kind of towns. Well, where Tampa Bay is going for it, it has that location, but it has the industry you would need um, because you need the employment side and the education side, in my opinion, to give the variety of where this town would be the best choice. So you have, at any given time with Tampa, you have um, a big enough area that's not overwhelming to provide some opportunity. You have some of the most open jobs in the entire state in this region. It's the third largest city. It is one of the commercial hubs of the state. You have the University of South Florida's main presence is in Temple Terrace, which is North Tampa. You have Tampa University, the large private school, which is in like the South Tampa area. Um, you have reasons basically that not only was someone from like Orlando that graduated UCF would move to Tampa as a more coastal, different style version of the city to work, um, but you'd have the equal reason if someone were Manhattan and San Francisco would move for uh, you know urban kind of lifestyle that's cheaper, but still work. You have large employers like that you can feel good about, like electronics. You have Tech Data, huge corporation. You have e, uh, Jabil, which is an electronic manufacturing services company in St. Pete. You have a huge defense industry here, like Honeywell. You have McDill Air Force Base, which is a large, large employer of this area that's in in, uh, in South Tampa. Um, you know, and I could go on. You know, one of the coolest things here, and I'm going to talk about this on Bullet Point Four a little bit more is that you have uh, even a big push that makes you feel good about um, startups. You know, Austin, Texas went kaboom when it came to startups, that was mini California. But the reason that Texas became in vogue to California was, um, you know, there's political stuff or whatever, but here and there, it's, uh, a lot of it was cost. Cost, land, for the whole thing, right? No state income tax, cheaper to pay the employees, employees can live more equally in that town next to their headquarters of their, you know, it's not the 1% versus the 80%. Uh, but Florida has a lot of that too. I mean, Florida is very sim similar economically as Texas, but we're coastal. You know, Austin's very far inland. You know, you're in Tampa Bay. There was always, when I was there, I was like, why is this not hit yet? Well, it is hitting now. There's software incubators, there's startup incubators, entrepreneurs galore. And it's becoming very attractive, and you have some very, very high-profile people that have moved there and are pushing it. You have sports. You have all this kind of stuff, right? So when it comes to um, commercial viability, I think you need uh, real-life economics that that median or that not even the, yeah probably the median level person. You need that person to be able to live in the town equally with the bottom and the top. 
for it to be the one that you'd have to pick if I articulated that hopefully well enough. And let's move to number three. All right, number three on the list, I wanna talk variety. So one of the really big things about, again, city being crash proof and Tampa excels in is the ability to live every single stage of life. Not saying you have to, but the ability, every part of your life, every single age range without leaving the same metro. And that is something that is not replicatable in a, most cities in Florida, I would say. So take my personal story. I think it's an interesting example. It, I, uh, I, my family moved us to Sarasota, Florida when I was four. And I lived there my childhood. I went to high school there. I left for college, of course. But I didn't come back until I was 31. And the reason I didn't come back is because, you know, of course you leave for school because like the degree I was looking at and stuff and Sarasota just doesn't have a huge presence for that. But I didn't come back because of work and things to do. I worked in finance and analytics, so it wasn't viable. And where I ended up was Tampa. And I lived there all of my 20s. I lived there in different life stages of, you know, work, hustle, bustle, crowd, young, married, first kid. And it satiated all those needs where Sarasota, even 31 was probably even a little young, uh, but Sarasota wasn't even in the conversation of being viable for both work and life um, until I got post 30. And I think that is very much commonplace. So where Tampa excels is um, it, it's the three county conversation one, Tampa Bay as a whole, but also the sheer variety. And uh, let me lay the land a little bit. I have a, I did a video, my last video, this channel's new, but my last video is five best places to live in Tampa. If you watch that, that'll give you a deeper context on some of the neighborhood stuff. But so check that out. But what, so let's just take like the size of the metro, right? It's way larger than Sarasota Naples, but it's not overwhelmingly large. It's not like, you know, Jacksonville is the biggest, uh, the biggest landmass in the contiguous United States, right? It's not that, but so it feels more inclusive, but it offers variety because of the size. So Hillsborough County is the meat of Tampa, it goes south all the way to like Brandon, Apollo Beach, and north all the way to like Tampa Palms area in the suburbs. Then Pinellas County, it's a quick geography lesson. P Pinellas County is the coastal side. So that's where St. Pete's at. That's where Clearwood is at. All the beaches, all the way up to Dunedin. And then Pasco County is the northern version of both those conversations, both the coast and the inland nature. So I'm just going to kind of riff on just to give you a quick example. So take like uh, you're a young professional and or in school and you have, uh, you know, North Hyde Park. You have downtown St. Pete, you have downtown Tampa, Tampa, you have Channel Side, you have all these areas that are walkable, that are mixed use, the gym, the coffee shop, the school, the work, all very close by. It feels very much like an extension of life versus a hamster wheel. Like you get off work and you that same crowd, you could like walk to a Tampa Bay Lightning hockey game. It feels that group of friends um, is easy to coexist even if you don't work at the same place. It's an extension of college. It's interesting. Not every place I've lived is like that. Then you say, okay, say you're 28, 29, and maybe you have a young kid, Then you, but you don't quite want to go to the suburbs yet. As another example, you have proper Hyde Park in South Tampa. You have Riverside Heights. You have Tampa Heights. You have Seminole Heights. Uh, you have um, Old Northeast outside of downtown St. Pete. You have Woodlawn, St. Paul Euclid. Maybe even you could flirt with like the Tampa Palms if you wanted a little bit more suburbia. That's not crazy. And that's close to USF. So then take that a step further and say, okay, whether it's new construction, I need more space. Um, you know, now at this point I need, you know, I need 3,200 square feet. Uh, my church is out there or something like that. The, one of the most interesting things about Tampa Bay is the spread of suburbs. So because of the, the shape, you can go every direction and find different types of suburbs. So the, probably the most in vogue, if you go north of town by about 24 miles, you hit Wesley Chapel, Florida. This is where all the land was at. They can build large master plan communities. There's crystal lagoons. Um, you know, it's where you go to get more affordability, new construction, size, the whole shebang. And it's probably the best one, the best version of it. I said shebang twice, weird word. Um, but then say, okay, what are my other options if I don't want to do that? And they're all, they're all interesting in their own ways. So another option you can go in the suburbs, because again, the shape is you can go east of downtown Tampa and go to Brandon, Lithia, Fishhawk is in Lithia, uh, Riverview and that area and south, southeast. And that gives you suburbs in the same right. It's way more mature, so you have a lot less new feeling there, but you can still do new construction. But what that gives you is it gives you a little bit closer access to commute. So closer commute than going north, a little bit less suburbs, but still suburbs and also gets you sneakily closer to Lakewood Ranch, Sarasota, in case one spouse has to go in the other direction. 
take that and then you can also go west. So that's something that like Sarasota, if you go west, you're in the water. Naples west is in the water. There's not a suburb there. West here is West Tampa. You haven't even hit St. Pete yet. So you go west here, you have West Chase, Carrollwood, you have Northdale. And what West does is, okay, you get more suburban housing. A lot of people need Florida style suburbs, right? Urban infill, you know, restored bungalows with a family aren't for everyone. So if you want to be kind of close to this stuff, but you're, you're fine with being 25 minutes in order to get more house, th that's this conversation. But if you go west here, what you do is the opposite of Brandon is you still get some sub suburbs that are more mature, maybe a little older, maybe 10, 15 years old. But this one gets you actually on the way to the beach. So where West Chase and all town and country and all these areas sit, you know, you might be 20 minutes both from Clearwater Beach and downtown Tampa, which is incredibly rare, right? To have all of that that Florida has to offer. And then if you go one step further, as we're getting crazy here, um, and you get more towards like retirement and stuff like that, you also have interesting ways to satiate those needs that are, would be way more like a Sarasota inside of a Tampa Bay. So you have Terra, Tierra Verde, which is at the southern tip of St. Pete Beach with Fort DeSoto Park, Tierra Verde. You have Dunedin, Safety Harbor, quaint, lovely, historic, charming, love those areas. You could go more affordable and you could do like the Lennar Medley 55 Nut brand, the Esplanade 55 Nut brand by Taylor Morrison and do the suburb version of that where they're basically like everything but the coast. Turnkey, mixed use lifestyle, um, a little bit more house, villa, stuff like that. And maybe you just go to the beach once a month or something like that. So needless to say, I can't do what I just did there with most cities in Florida. So again, for viability, whether you wanna mix it up and leave or not, you can live 10 different versions of life within Tampa Bay's Metro. Um, and I think that is point number three makes it um, a strong argument for being crash proof. All right, I'm gonna give you one more as number four here, but before I digress, and this is the idea for lack of better words of simply following what smart people are doing. So you could not believe anything I'm saying, you cannot believe anything anyone's saying, but if you follow the path of what people are actually doing with their time and their money, um, then you can get a lot of clarity around it. And you know that's how I like to look at things a lot of the times because these are patterns, these are recipes, these are things that are done in the past. And if you can, if you can see like a lane of what's going to happen next by what you've seen before, a lot of clarity there, you know? So, um, you know, it's like when, why is a Starbucks pop up and three doors down, Chipotle's there every time and Verizon's in between and Dunkin' Donuts is around the corner. They know these things far in advance before the sign ever goes in the yard. Things get pushed into areas that you can kind of see the stability of the economics of that city based on who's interested in going into it. So let me give you just a couple examples. Like it's a, this video is shorter, but a couple examples were what I mean here. So take Wesley Chapel, that suburb I mentioned that's north of Tampa. Well, what is Lakewood Ranch to Sarasota? It was built in 1995, number one multi-generational master plan in the entire United States, northeast of town. Wesley Chapel is northeast of Tampa. It has the land, has the same builders, Pulte, Taylor Morrison, you got the same guys. Um, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to solve um, do you need to go to town for everything? That's always the knock on the suburbs. Yeah, of course you go far and you get affordability. Of course you go far and they could build new homes. Yes, that was always the thing. But what they're doing now is they're solving the tug of why do I need to go into town, especially with work from home culture, is what they need is they need dining, restaurants, shopping. Um, they need uh, mixed use environments. They need kid friendly activities. They need everything but the beach. And that's what they're doing. They're building, they're building outdoor open air malls. They're building, non-chain looking restaurants. They're building these pods container inner, you know, villages of like getting out mixed use spaces where there's turf areas for kids to hang out and you could grab a drink and they're doing all these things where, and then they're even building crystal freshwater lagoons. So maybe you don't even have to go to the beach. And then the city is kind of self-sustaining and that's what they've done across Florida. And that makes it way more compelling than being the far suburb of one large Metro. And so I think that one is a, something that that one's very underrated and that's going to uh, make Tampa even more in vogue for people moving out of state, especially. All right. And just one more to give you a little bit of extra credence to finish off here is if we take downtown Tampa, which collides with channel side and collides with the Riverwalk district, that area of Tampa would be like the heart of it. That's where, um, uh, smart people are pushing their money in. They're building luxury condominiums on the river there. There's water taxis. It's walkable. What they're appealing to it, a lot of people in 2023 across all age ranges are, in my opinion, really wanting to get away from their life being completely separate and, and unbalanced. They're wanting social, health, work, 
family, that whole thing to be much more blended. And having a closer density that all those items exist makes that more viable. So if you, you know, Channel Side collides with this new district that they're really developing called Water Street. Jeffrey Vinnick, the owning of the Tampa Bay Lightning hockey team, uh, owns and develops a lot of that kind of stuff. But they have you know, the Florida Aquarium there, Tampa University, a place called Sparkman Wharf, pods, containers converted to restaurants and coffee shops and very cool, very walkable, lovely area. The River Walk is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. Um, they're, they, align, they line the river with a really nice um, dock that's open containers. You can grab a drink from one of the restaurants that line it and walk this whole thing. It's bikeable, it's walkable. You can walk to it from downtown. And there's restaurants like Armature Works, which is a food hall, Eulalie. Um, uh, there's, uh, it runs into downtown Tampa, but that's another area that um, gives you a lot of access. Um, and downtown Tampa is a little bit more of a work culture, but they're getting, um, you know, you have a lot of financial organizations there. They got a WeWork there that wasn't there um, when I used to work down there. And it's just becoming more um, transient. And so I think, and, and the people that are pushing into it and the level of the condo buildings and all that kind of stuff is a clear flag to me of, it, it, this is real. This is happening. They're trying to recruit tech firms to come down here and they need all that stuff. If you're going to get a C-level executive to move his entire tech base here, they, they're they trying to satiate that need, which is going to um, make it cool for a lot of the people that are already there. So those are just a couple items where I think it finishes off the point if I haven't beat it down enough, uh, is that I think Tampa in 2023, Tampa Bay um, is the absolute best chance to um, circumvent um, an implosion.